Hi everyone, welcome to the Finance Crash Course. Earlier, when we talked about uh, the discounted cash flow uh, model, the DCF model, we talked about uh, the discount rate to use the discounted cash flow back, back uh, to current uh, present value. And one of the ways that we can do uh, to calculate that cost of capital is using what's known as WAC, which is about the weighted average cost of capital, short form for W A C C. And essentially, the intuition behind this is that we're trying to find uh, the cost of capital, which is the cost of the funds for the firm. And what is the cost of funds for the firm? A firm can be funded by equity, and it can be funded by debt. So we look at the cost of its debt and the cost of its equity, and then we take a weighted average of the two based on how much equity the firm has and how much debt the firm has. And because uh, debt, uh, the interest payments are tax deductible, we take into account the tax effect as well. So as uh, many of you know from mathematics, uh, it's when you want to take an weighted average of something, it's uh, the formula is more of like the weighted average is the weighting for A, and then whatever the value of A is, and then the weighting for B, and whatever the uh, value for B is, and then the weight for A and weight for B you can add up to one. So we have that constraint of W A plus W B equals one. So that's how we use to uh, weight uh, something in general uh, from a mathematical standpoint. Now we use the same uh, concept. Uh, instead that we're weighting the cost of uh, debt and the cost of equity. So let uh, R uh, D be the cost of debt. And then the after tax cost of debt is just one minus the tax rate, okay? So that's saved, uh, for example, if this was 10% cost of debt, and your tax rate is 30%, your after tax cost of debt, it will only be 7% because 30% of that is from tax savings. And then the weighting for the cost of debt would just be the amount of debt that your firm has over the total of debt and equity. And then you add in, so that's like this part, and then you add in the cost of equity, and then you look at your equity over your debt plus equity. So notice that these two, this one is like the weight for the first one and weight for the second one. And then these two uh, weights add up to one, which satisfies the condition here. This represents the proportion of the firm's uh, capital structure in debt. This represents the proportion of the firm's capital structure in equity. And then that's the cost of equity, that's the cost of debt, and that's the cost of debt. So essentially just weights the two together. And then uh, we'll talk about how to get the cost of uh, debt and the cost of equity. So for the cost of debt, essentially, uh, it can be approximated using, uh, say, for example, if you have one, uh, $100 of debt and you paid a dollar of interest last year, then approximation would be say, assuming that's 1% of the cost of debt. But a more accurate way is to look at, uh, say, for example, the debt schedule, which shows what debt the company has and what interest rates they have to pay on it. The cost of equity, uh, it's a little bit more controversial. Uh, generally, people use... Uh, a cost of equity derived from the capital asset pricing model, the CAPM uh, method, or by using a similar model, uh, which we'll discuss when we talk about cost of equity. Uh, thank you, and uh, please watch our other videos to learn more about finance.